Good morning and welcome to our worship service. Psalm chapter 100 verses 5 to 6 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his people. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues to all generations. There is no question that the psalmist encouraged us to start our worship service today to shout for joy to the Lord. Because indeed, what a beautiful blessing to experience God's greatness and God's goodness as we continue to honor Him. The psalmist encouraged us to be joyful. The psalmist encouraged us to sing songs to the Lord. And today, one of the greatest things that we can also experience, God wants us to do worship, wants us to enjoy our time with Him. Apostle Paul, with the theme of the book of Philippians, which is rejoice always, wanted us to do just that. Because God wants us to joyfully approach His throne of grace when we worship. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, may I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. And today I will share with you the idea about rejoicing in the Lord. Even though the psalmist encouraged us, even though the Apostle Paul encouraged us, but it is our choice. So on this passage of the scriptures, Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 to 7, I will say the choice is yours to rejoice or not to rejoice. The word of God said in verse 4, chapter 4 up to 7, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication or petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly Father, we are so thankful that today we can rejoice with the psalmist, King David, as we approach your throne of grace to worship and honor you. Lord, we are the sheep of your pastures. You are our God. We are your sheep. We are, our, we are your sheep. We are, you are our shepherd. And Lord, thank you so much that with thankfulness in our hearts, we can tell you, we can say to you, thank you for your goodness and for your blessings upon our lives. Be with us today. We ask for your Holy Spirit to grant us wisdom in the understanding and living your word. And help us, O oh God, to know your perspective in our lives, not only today, but every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. One of the simplest words of the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Philippians and to us is rejoice in the Lord always. And he said it again. Rejoice. For all of us wants to be joyful. Wants to be happy wants to be enjoying everything. All of us want joy and happiness in life. You work hard because you want to enjoy life. You study hard because you want to get the career that you wanted and you get good payment, good paying job. So we will be happy in our lives. You choose the one that you want to spend your life together so that you will have your own family and that you will be happy. But brothers and sisters in the Lord, a lot of people choose not to. 
A lot of people refuse the offer of happiness and joy from the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember one of the great preachers in the late 1800s. A good preacher, a good theologian. His name is Charles Haydn Spurgeon. He said, all times, of all times, joy and rejoicing in the Lord, there is a marvelous medicinal power in it. Most medicines are distasteful. But this joy in the Lord, but this enjoy, rejoicing in the Lord is the best of all medicines. It's sweet to the test, test and comforting to the heart. This blessed joy is very contagious. One dolorous spirit brings a kind of plague into the house. One person who is great of joy is contagious. Holy joy will oil the wheels of your life's machinery. Holy joy will strengthen for you your daily labor, your daily sacrifice. Holy joy is be will beautify you and give you an influence over the lives of others. So rejoice, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. He father said that no joy ever visits my soul. Like that of acknowledging that Jesus is highly exalted and that to him every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The greatest joy of a Christian is to give joy to Christ in everything that we do. But you may ask, in times like this, in times when we are in the midst of trial and testing, is it really possible to rejoice in the Lord? Is it possible to be joyful when someone passed away because of the pandemic, because of the COVID-19? Is it possible to rejoice when you are in the midst of great needs in your life. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, it is. Because we know that even if someone passed away, the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ that we will be with them again sometime. That's why Apostle Paul said, rejoice. And again I say rejoice. And not only that. He said, rejoice always. What do you mean by always? All time. Every minute of the hour. Every hour of the day. Every day of the week. And every week of the month. Be joyful in the Lord. Am I supposed to go around with a perfect smile on my face to show others? Brothers and sisters in the Lord. Philippians chapter 4 verse 4 is a commandment repeated twice for emphasis, which means we need to give attention to it. Just like when the Lord Jesus Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that issue following that, those words are so important. So which means this is very important. The result or the reason why the burden of the result is on us because the choice to rejoice actually depends on us. When we go through trials, when we're treated unfairly, when we're disappointed by people or circumstances, we are faced with a decision. Will I be joyful? Will I rejoice? Brothers and sisters in the Lord, as a God command, commandment for us, will you obey this command? To rejoice in the Lord. Or will you allow yourselves. To be swept along. By your feelings. Remember this. This joy in the Lord. Which we must aim for. Is not a superficial happiness. Based on circumstances. Or on the absence of trials. But rather. Is a solid abiding contentment. And hope. That is steady. 
and certain as our faithful God who has given us his promise, promises in his word. So, the question is, your choice, to rejoice or not to rejoice. And if you choose to rejoice, brothers and sisters, as I do, if you do, there are things or there are actions that you need to show. Number one, if you choose to rejoice, show that to everyone. In verse 5, Apostle Paul says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Now, Apostle Paul says, You need to have this quality in all your relationships. Be joyful within the world. Be joyful at work. Be joyful at family. Be joyful at friends. And especially be joyful in the church where sometimes we step on each other's toes because there are still a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ that needs to mature. And sometimes your patience is exhausted. But the idea there, brothers and sisters in the Lord, please be patient to everyone because God is not finished with us yet. And one interesting thing in here, Apostle Paul tells us to develop this quality of rejoicing always by adding the word, the Lord is near. He could mean two things on this one, both of which are true. When he said the Lord is near, he could mean since the Lord is always present, he is always a witness to our relationships. Keeping the fact in mind will help us to, to ourselves to, to show kindness always, to put self to death and to show gentleness to those who act passively towards us. Paul is emphasizing the importance of showing kindness, joy, and gentleness to others. Because you know what? The Lord is standing watching us. A number of verses in the Old Testament gives us the assurance to God's people that God will not leave us nor forsake us, which means He will always be there for us. He is very near to us. For when we are tried and we are tired, He can be our refuge. He is near to us to call upon Him for strength to endure patiently any difficulty we encounter. Hebrews chapter 13 verses 5 to 6 assures us, The Lord said, I will never desert you, nor I will ever forsake you. Now we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What shall man do to me? Remembering that the presence of the Lord will enable us to be gentle. The Lord is near. Can also be interpreted as the Lord's coming is getting closer. His coming is near. When he will right all the wrongs. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, trust him to deal with the other guy's selfishness. And you will deal with your own by yielding your rights out of love. And then and only then, you can experience joy in your life as you continue to serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Number two, if you choose to rejoice, worry not. Worry not. In verse 6 he says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving present your request to God. Someone described anxiety as a thin stream of fear trickling through your minds. Just a small issue trickling into your mind causes you to worry. Merriam-Webster says, to worry means showing concern about what is happening or what might happen. 
But you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, a lot of people are so concerned of those things that might happen. They are not happening yet. And yet we are so concerned, what if? Why should we be? If we believe in God, if we believe in the Lord who is so worthy of trust, if we believe of the Lord is so powerful, then we're not supposed to worry of those things that are still happening or not happening yet. Jesus said through the Apostle Paul, do not be anxious about anything or do not worry about anything or everything. For God has promised that he will be with you. To those who have committed their lives to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, this is his promise. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Believe in God. And believe also in the Lord Jesus Christ. He spoke those comforting words. On the most difficult night he faced on the earth. The night before his crucifixion. Sometimes in the New Testament our God is called either the God or the Lord of peace. This means that we have here in not just a simple formula. The God of peace is always with us. If you're anxious, try prayer. And brothers and sisters in the Lord, it works. It means if you're anxious, examine either your lack of faith in the living God, who has promised to supply the basic needs of his children, who promised that he will supply all the basic needs of yours and mine. Examine your focus. Whether you're living for Christ and his kingdom or you're living for yourself. That's why you are so anxious. That's why you are so worried. You mentioned about if you're worried, pray. If you're worried, he said, give thanks to the Lord. If you're worried, present your request to God. This means that we need to be face to face with God when all our circumstances come to him directly. This means that when we pray, we must stop to remember that we are coming into the very presence of the holy God where even the holy angels cover their faces and cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Stop thinking about yourself. And start praying to God. The word request overlaps with prayer and petition. Emphasizing the specific, definite nature of our petitions to the Lord. But again, going back to the start of verse 6. Do not be anxious. Do not worry, brothers and sisters in the Lord. For the good for the Lord is good. And his mercies is endures forever he said ask and it shall be given to you seek and you shall find knock and the doors will be off open to you if someone ask actually God illustrated that one he goes on to illustrate the point by saying that if a boy asks his father for a loaf of bread dad won't give him a stone if he asked for a fish to eat, dad would give him a snake. And this is what kind of God we have. With our anxious heart, with our worrying heart, if we will come to him, he will just be there to rescue us. Lastly, number three, if you choose to rejoice, have the peace of God. Have the peace of God. In verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ. To experience God's peace. 
bring every concern to him. We are promised of God's incomparable peace when we pray. For the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Whenever there is unrest, the cry that prevails in our minds, in our lives, in our thoughts, is the need for peace. I remember before we go to sleep every night, we always pray, God, give us your peace so that we will be able to sleep well. For many, peace is simply the absence of conflict. However, brothers and sisters in the Lord, there is a peace that God promises to you that has nothing to do with the absence of conflict. In fact, this is a peace that flows even in the midst of conflict. This is known as the peace of God that transcends all understanding. What the Apostle Paul is talking about is the peace that only comes from God the Father, who is never subject to worry like us, because He is the Sovereign. He is omnipotent. He is the all-powerful God. And I remember this one last Thursday during our prayer meeting. He is our omnipotent God. He is the creator and Lord of the universe. Nothing takes him by surprise or makes him wonder how it will turn. Because brothers and sisters in the Lord, he already knows what our future is. This is the peace. That Jesus promised that no one in the world can give. And when you experience this peace from God, the quietness, the dependency, the relaxation, or, or, or your mind is so relaxed in God because we know that His peace that surpasses any understanding of your mind or anything you can reason will watch over your heart and mind and will take whatever measures are necessary to keep them in the peace of God. When you consider your situation in the midst of it, sometimes it won't make logical sense. You should be worried, but you are not. You should be panicking, but you are not. You should, be have, you should have anxiety, but you don't. And the answer for that is, you followed what Apostle Paul is telling us. Receive the peace of God which transcends all understanding, and He will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. This is the kind of peace that God offers for us. It's not passive, but an active peace that is always fighting against worries, against troubles, against confusions, and against that so busy mind, the peace of God fighting on our behalf. Yes, it is humanly not explainable. But praise God, this peace is real. Talk to me about it. Talk to people who experience this. Talk to the child of God who has known this peace from God alone. This peace that stands guard like a sentry over our inner person, our hearts and minds, our thoughts, which is in Jesus Christ. We're just to follow that. Take the peace of God, for you will be calm 
you will be relaxed. You will not even wonder why. What's happening in the world. Let me close with this, brothers and sisters in the Lord. God's promise isn't just a quick fix. Where prayer is a technique that will bring you calm until you get through the crisis. No. Paul is talking about an ongoing, deepening, intimate relationship with the God of peace. Where you seek to play to please him with all your thoughts. Where you seek to please him with all your words. Where you seek to please him in all your actions and deeds. That we will always desire to draw near to the God of peace. Because when you draw near to the God of peace. God will draw near to you. So do you know God's peace? In the midst of situations that the world get anxious about. If not, my friend, examine yourself. Even Christians, even those who have committed their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. Is your faith in Him and your focus on His kingdom, right? True? Or just superficial? Because you focus on your selfish pursuit. Have you drawn near to God in reverent, specific, thankful prayer? If you do, you can put your full weight down on him. On him. And as he promised, he will bear you up and give you up and give you his indescribable peace. It makes your life so much more enjoyable. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, if you have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ, you do not experience the peace of God. You will not even rejoice. Because for you, there is no reason to rejoice. But if you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, and you are not rejoicing, then examine yourself. Check it out. Is your decision to commit your life to Him, to be, to let Him be your Savior and Lord, real? Because if it is, whatever comes into your life, whatever experiences will come to you, whatever circumstances, whatever situation, you will choose to rejoice. I don't know why people choose not to rejoice. But for me and my house, we rejoice in the Lord always. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you've given us peace that passes all understanding. Peace that will give us joy within. And indeed, we will always rejoice over and over again because of that goodness that you have given us, of that faithfulness that we receive from you. And Father, I pray, yes, we could not excuse ourselves from experiencing trials and testings in life. Lord, we pray that if today we have brothers and sisters who cannot just rejoice because of something that happened in their lives. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to control them, to remind them that you are in control also, that you are the God of the universe. Bless us now as we continue to live a life rejoicing because of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the joy of God that gives us peace, peace that passes all understanding. And the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, the reason for joy and the Holy Spirit, His guidance, His protection will be upon each one of us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
God bless you all.